How's it going, everybody? It's Dr. Weefer with another virtual lab walkthrough just for you. This is the diffusion through a membrane lab, part one for the living environment. So the first thing that we get to do is we're going to talk about indicators. Indicators are going to test for the presence of something. Usually it's a color change. Sometimes it's bubblings. It's usually something that can be observable. We're going to be testing for starch and we're going to be testing for glucose using certain indicators and we're going to be using for water as a control. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to use Benedict solution. Benedict solution is a, a solution that tests for glucose when you heat it up. Right now you can see it's a blue color in the presence of glucose after you heat it up and only in the presence of glucose it's going to turn a red color. So what we want to do is we want to add Benedict solution to water, starch, and glucose just to see how it works. And you can see it's a lighter blue color because it actually got diluted by the other liquids. So it's a lighter blue. And then after we heat it up for a couple of minutes, let's see what happens. And boom, it works awesome. So glucose actually is present in the glucose, obviously, and it turns from a blue color to a orange red color. And by the way, it's called Benedict solution. Can you think of a trader in the American Revolution that turned from a blue coat to a red coat? Just curious. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test for starch. We are going to be using an iodine solution that is going to be a amber color. And right now when we dilute it in water, it's going to maybe have a lighter yellow color. And we are going to see what happens for the presence of starch. It is going to turn into a purple or a black color only in the presence of starch. So here again, we have our water, we have our starch, we have our glucose. We're going to add it to all three and we're going to test for the presence of starch. And you guessed it, guys, there is starch in the starch. So we know that this works great. The reason why it's a lighter yellow color, just like before with the Benedict solution, it turned a lighter color just because it got dilute. But there is no lighter color here that is clearly a dark purple or black color. Uh, so, so the starch indicator iodine works great. Okay, so now we're, we got the ind indicators down. We are ready to look into the lab. The lab is going to be looking at a dialysis membrane. There's no way to really look at it diffusion of a cell too easily under the microscope. So we're going to be making an artificial cell using this dialysis membrane. And if you look real closely at the dialysis membrane, it has microscopic pores. These microscopic pores act just like a cell membrane where stuff can go in and out of this artificial cell uh, depending upon if it's small enough to fit through the, the pores. This is why it's going to be considered semi-permeable. Okay, so what we want to do is we tie off one end of the dialysis tube. Uh, we're going to fill it with a solution. In this case, we're filling it with half glucose solution and half starch solution. And then we tie off the other end. And this is our artificial cell that we're ready to submerge into a liquid. So this, to set up the experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the initial state of putting the dialysis tube that's right here. We are going to be putting it in a solution of iodine, which is a starch indicator. And because there's glucose and starch on the inside, initially we are not going to be noticing anything. Uh, but after time goes on, we notice something. What do we notice? We see that the outside didn't really change much. The iodine solution didn't really change, but inside definitely changed color. So what do you remember from before that actually changed into a purple black color. And you guessed it, the iodine. So as evidence from this experiment, we talk about diffusion going from high concentration to a low concentration across a membrane. We can observe right now that the iodine went from a high concentration to a low concentration and it detected the starch. But did the starch go from inside the cell to outside the artificial cell? And the answer would be no because you do not see the outside solution turning a purple or black. Okay, so what about the glucose? Well, we could actually open up this uh, bag and we can test for the presence of glucose using the Benedict solution inside the bag. And why not we just test the outside uh, environment for glucose as well? If you remember inside the bag, there was starch and there was also glucose. So let's see what happened. So what we wanna do is we added Benedict solution to outside the cell. Benedict's inside the cell, and how does it look? Well, guess what? We didn't heat it up yet. So here is the heat. After the heat, we see that they both turn red, okay? 
Uh, so what's going to happen is it, they both change color, even if it's not the beautiful red that you're expecting. That shows it's going to be positive for glucose. So now we can relook at our diagram. And we can look at after the final state, after 30 minutes, outside in the environment, we, have, we started out with iodine and we still have iodine. And then glucose is present in the outside, so it diffused from the inside to the outside. And then iodine diffused from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. Starch, however, did not diffuse through the membrane. Why didn't starch diffuse through the membrane? Well, if you remember the pore size, it had to be the right size. So you can guess that starch is probably much too large to go through the cell membrane. Iodine and glucose, however, were able to diffuse back and forth. Now keep in mind, diffusion goes from high concentration to low concentration until it's equilibrium reached. If we let this go even longer, it would establish even more of an equilibrium. You can see it didn't actually change places. It wasn't like the iodine went from the outside to the inside and traded places. Uh, they're both present. And the same thing with the glucose. We saw them both present on the inside and the outside. All right, guys, so that's part one of the lab. Uh, part two is going to be the, um, the onion cell. Uh, we'll get into that later, and stay tuned for that. Goodbye.